and we are back with another dose of EastEnders Weekly Podcast where we discuss the British soap EastEnders and we are discussing the episodes that are broadcast between the 23rd and the 27th of September and I am Ben the host and I am joined again by Alex. Hello Ben, um, watching that was painful. Well, my couple chairs of, couple, slips out. Well a couple of things to point <laughs> out, we're clearly discussing a lot of things because you've mentioned that word a few times in that warm introduction and also I think you need to put your teeth in because <laughs> there was a lot of... <laughs> I feel like Jonathan Roth. Wow. <laughs> Hope Jonathan Roth isn't listening. Sorry for any offence caused to anyone I who has a speech offense. impediment of any sort. Well, I'm one of them, so it's fine. Well, yours is self-imposed because <laughs> you decided to have some large things stuck in your mouth. Well, I did the podcast like last year, remember, when I just had mm. a whole eight hours of dental work. Set of teeth put in. Try you. and find that episode and listen to that. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I think you sound like more coherent. Yeah, yeah, you don't sound any more or less coherent now. I mean, anyway, speaking of a year long of podcast, we've been doing this for like over a year and a half now. Every week we've been here, not missed anything. We've missed one week. Well, yeah, our holiday. That wasn't our fault. Was we've holiday. had troubles and things, but I think this week we actually have our biggest challenge we've faced yet on the show. Mm. Basically, we've got to discuss Ted for two weeks in a row. <laughs> Painfully. I don't but, know how we're going to do it. Well, we know that on the other side of this, we possibly don't need to ever discuss Ted ever again. That's true. So, you know, there's, 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 there's the pros and the cons to all this. So if we, we, you know, if we just push it to the end, anyone anyone who wants to listen to Ted particularly right now, then head to the end of the podcast because that's when we'll be talking about him. Because as his end was fitting, as is our fitting end. Mm. So like, that was deep, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we must mention, because we should never forget this, we officially are unofficial. No, we do need to mention that this week because mm. someone tweeted us thinking we were the official podcast yeah. thing. We, I can't believe the official East End's podcast just spoiled that. And we were like, we're not official though. No, believe it or not. Believe it or not. And then the the guy said, I presume it was a guy, sorry if you're... They. Good, that. <laughs> they <laughs> um, or them. They or them. I said, well, why aren't you the official podcast? And it's a question what Might we've well been be. thinking. Yeah, we've been thinking for a long time. Because <laughs> so. we can't speak one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we get things wrong too. <laughs> We're normally pulled up by our breaches by a lot of people. Yeah, by, but that's that's what this podcast is all about. If we say anything inaccurate or wrong, or you disagree with us, then we're more than happy for you to get in touch with us because then we can have a nice discussion about it because that's all we're doing. We're discussing mm. discussions. So get in touch with us. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and or YouTube, or email us, eastendersweekly at gmail.com. Got that out of the way quick enough, didn't I? Yeah, we say it about four more times. So it's fine this oh. week. Um, but who is our weekly shout out this week well our weekly shout out has been a long time coming he's been wanting us to give him a shout out for a long long time and wanting we, yeah we've <laughs> he is wanting a long coming <laughs> and we we've given him a mini hello now and then by mentioning him at the end of the show when we do who won the week and we read out the comments but we've not done an official hello so hello to michael perry the Mr. Plant Geek. Oh, yeah. Bridgeter trademark. Mm-hmm. There's a little R with a circle around it. How Mr. QVC we... and This Morning. Thing. Yeah, we, we've seen him on both, haven't we? We tuned in specially. Oh, yeah, we did. Mm. We didn't buy anything. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> we didn't feel moved to buy anything. But not because any of your products are not any good. It's just that our garden didn't need those products. I hate gardens and plants. <laughs> Mm. I don't think you'd be very impressed with our garden because it's AstroTurf. No, no. We need Charlie Dimmock. Mm. What's well, that rubbish show she does now? Garden Rescue. Garden Rescue. She lives, really cheap. She lives just down the road to us. Does she? Mm, she does. Mm. A friend of mine saw her leaving a shop quite red-faced with a, bo- with a bottle of red wine in her hand. <laughs> so she'd obviously had a good night and was just continuing it on. <laughs> Didn't want to end. So, uh, Michael Perry, I decided to find a funny tweet that you did this week and uh, you can find him by the way on twitter at mr underscore plant geek and you can find him on instagram at the same sign on what's what you call it same name. user username yeah so he said this week to us at eastenders week does sharon's body defy gravity so ben <laughs> does that Sharon's referring body... to <laughs> well, i don't know what's she doing this week she i like how letitia dean being the brilliant actress she is, is now when she like walks or goes to pick up stuff, she holds her bump and does it. Yeah. I've noticed that a lot this week. She's got a little bump. <laughs> she is. But she's, you know, she, she's under a lot of stress. She's really under a, quite a stressful pregnancy, isn't she? Oh, yeah. Not helped by Ice Queen. Mm, more on that later, no doubt. Um, we must recommend also that you listen to Michael Perry, Mr. Plant Geek, Registered Trademark podcast. If you go to your favourite podcast app or go to Apple 
podcast and just search the plant based podcast um and he talks all things plant based yeah with his friend who's also funny mm, she's great um we've seen their video a couple of times on instagram they do instagram live sometimes mm. and they do more than what we do we don't do any instagram live. exactly maybe, maybe we should if you guys would like to see an instagram live <laughs> no. get in touch we should that'd be fun i don't do live television we should do one i like letitia dean <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe we should do it for like our hundredth or something, because yeah. it's not far 500th. away now. Five hundred is far too far away. <laughs> we might not even be here by five hundred. I'm so negative. Every time we talk about the future, I'm always like, we're not with you. We never know. We never know. But anyway, so yeah, check them out on Instagram at Mr. Underscore Plant Geek, and the same again for Twitter. Um, a good friend of ours, Michael. Mm. And if you want a shout out, get in t- touch with us, and we'll give you a shout out. Yeah, get in touch. <laughs> uh, send us your name, your where people can get in touch with you on Twitter, Instagram, all the socials. And, and also, something about EastEnders. Something about EastEnders, a story or a comment that we can discuss at the beginning of the show. that's all we care about, EastEnders. <laughs> we are an EastEnders-based podcast, <laughs> although not officially. No, but speaking of EastEnders, we are starting off this week with everyone's favourite new couple of 2019. Official by Wolford Webb 2019 poll is Balam, the most favourite 2019 couple. What is not to love about the Balam? Well, it's very steamy this week, actually. Well, it got steamy near the end of the week, but that's mainly because Callum got steamed. And so this was a bit of a bone of contention. We had one drink. We had one and a half. I know. But that's for that Callum. That is a lot for Callum, <laughs> yeah, he did to be say, fair. Yeah, a few weeks ago, he did say he can't really have a lot to drink because it descends <laughs> him too nice. over the edge. Ben seems convinced now that Callum really only likes him when he's had too much to drink. It's one of those guys you see in the gay bar on a Wednesday night who comes in after having a bit too much to drink. Is gay, but doesn't really want to admit it. And so comes in on the in, in, you know, under a shadow of... Uh... They like Hollyoaks this week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like all those nurses, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, the beginning of the week as well, we had Ben. He seemed to have felt a bit guilty about what he'd done to the Slaters. Mm. So again, Ben, he does this a lot, doesn't he? Where he does something thinking he's Phil Mitchell and then realises he's not Phil Mitchell, he's more Kathy Bill and then feels sorry for what he's done. But then but... soon reverts back to Phil Mitchell. Yeah. I mean, it's because he wanted to help Gene and Gene refused his help. Mm. Um, he didn't like it. He didn't like it. Gene is now going through the change because she's obviously <laughs> had that operation. She is. The ch- oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> don't know what you were talking about then. <laughs> no, like, no, no yeah she's going starting menopause we yes. think because she's getting hot flushes well, it's got stuff. kick-started since she's had mm. the operation a couple of weeks ago and so she's refusing any help because she knows or she feels that she that stacy and martin or well, mainly stacy has been kicked out all because of what ben, ben has did. done and ben was feeling a bit remorseful he got the spanner out the wrench <laughs> and was cleaning it on kind of thinking yeah i'm gonna throw it into the dumpster but then was interrupted <laughs> i know stupid callum. callum so callum's messed up again God. Do you think that I just thought you said that wrench? Is that the same wrench that he hit um the boy with when he said you need slapping down? Do you think it's the same <laughs> wrench? I don't know. But it well, is Lucas's son. Yeah. I mean that would be a prop and a half if Ben's thing. got it again now. It's, it's funny, isn't clutches. it? It's, it's all about the wrench, isn't it? Wrench story. <laughs> but um yeah. But then, then he wasn't the one who attacked. It was Stacy. And yeah, he ultimately ended up with it though. I don't really friend. see what that kind of evidence that would be. I know, she's got Stacy's fingerprints on it, it's like yeah, but he's, he's had it wrapped up in a cloth. They must be rubbed off by mm. now. And it's been, you know, long enough. Wear and tear, you know, it would kind of dictate that surely mm. th- that has no evidence. I guess left. he just knows it's enough to scare her because of the whole Archie mm. incident. So she's has got you know, she's done it before. Yeah. She could do it again. But yeah, he was about to throw it in the dumpster, but then Callum interrupted. Yep, yep. His stupid black suit. I can't even remember what you interrupted about. It was he was like interrupting him knowing noticing that he was like upset with how Jean Oh, that's right. And he'd also heard him talking about a deal about a car or something, so... Well, that's another thing, isn't it? Because Ben's been doing a few dodgy deals this week. Yeah, stepping in Shirley's shoes. Shirley's shoes. (laughs) Goodness, Ben. Have you had a a bit of a drink today? I I can't talk, which is difficult on... um this format well yes but it's audio and you have to talk out loud um it's fine yeah because he's taken over shirley's role while shirley's <laughs> on her three week vacation yeah with tina yeah w- w- which tina came back for and then left again for <laughs> still unexplained no one really knows but it was thomas cook so the flight changed i thought that too you see i thought the same thing i thought thomas cook had basically left them in the lurch they could have done a topical scene insert for that tina at the airport or- shirley i'm late thomas cook cancelled my flight <laughs> <laughs> but the kathy wouldn't take any of that nonsense <laughs> Because Kathy's already had her late once or twice. Well, there's Whitney as well, though, isn't there? Whitney could have said, so yeah, she could have. Call them back my back. I'm coming back <laughs> home. Because Whitney did come back home to a, an upset Callum. Yeah, we're not talking about Whitney yet because we've got to talk about Ben's dodgy deals oh, okay, with his um, prison mate who possibly an old flame. There Tubs. seems to be some. 
<laughs> Tubbs, every time I hear the name, I just Tubbs. think I think of the character from League of Gentlemen when they, they own the shop at the top of the hill. I don't like that. Scares me. <laughs> Are you local? Oh no, they scare me. Those two. They own a shop, and it's yeah, mm, two I of can, them. I can, I can't. Yeah. No. But I um, mean, yeah, Tubbs, he's lost some weight since Ben last saw him in prison. Mm, but you wouldn't believe it with the two fried breakfasts he was knocking <laughs> together on one plate. I know, but yeah, it's sort of sexual chemistry between those two. Tubbs Although had nice Ben does eyes. have sexual chemistry with everyone, to be fair. But everything is sexual to uh, to Ben. <laughs> Anything, you know, violent or the idea of, like, being nasty to someone mm. kind of turns Ben on. And I got the kind of impression that he didn't really have the time. When Callum came to him upset at the end of the week, Ben kind of said, oh, you know, I'll look after you, gave him a hug. And then he did the old look at the, the you know, shot of the camera that Callum wasn't seeing in the face of, oh, I don't think Ben... I think Ben didn't realise what he had in store, that he was basically going to help Callum out. Mm. And I don't think Ben's really that bothered about that. I think he preferred the chase. The fun. Yeah. Stubble rubbing rather than the (laughs) The playground nookie. But I mean, mean, he's doing like dodgy deals with like a car because some guy said, oh, I know someone who's looking for some sort of Jaguar or something. I'm not a car person. And then Ben was like, oh, maybe I can get you that. And now Tubbs, who's recently out of prison, going to help Ben I'm assuming but then he said something about money loaning so is is he going to because because oh, he asked Phil if he wanted to get into that again and Phil's like no I don't want to do I did that before it's dodgy hmm. so I think Ben is going to go into it but then he collected money for Phil so presumably that was for some kind of lend loan of some sort so it just hmm. seems to it was a it was it seemed a bit confused this week all it's... of these dodgy deals seem confused because apparently hmm. they have like chicken shops they own but we've never seen them <laughs> buy these chicken shops <laughs> What are these chicken shops that you'd imagine if you found out like in a year or two's time that Phil was actually the sole owner of KFC? <laughs> I mean, that's what Sharon should give Mel. Instead of a villa in Portugal, she should give her a chicken shop down the road. Yeah, it's, a, an, income. Up. it's an income. Yeah, give her a McClunkies. It does well. Drug dealing in there, she'll be fine. She'll mm. sort it out. Like, like you said, we had Whitney come back as well this week. Whitney returned. No yes. tan, so she spent a lot of time in that hotel room. Yes, but not, closed. but not getting up to much because she said she didn't want to make, she didn't want to move on too quickly. Yeah. Crying and talking. <laughs> well, the two things that she didn't. What everyone room. wants to do on a holiday. It sounds like a Bridget Jones type holiday, doesn't it? Mm. Writing a diary, crying, and just thinking about men. But I mean, I mean, the most obvious twist in the world, which I'm really disappointed with at the end. Like they left it to the end as well to reveal it was him. It's mm. like everyone knew it was him like three weeks ago. They even give him the Friday duff duff. I know. It's like wasted. That was wasted duff duff. Makes me think that Bianca's return was even more pointless than I thought it was originally. I think it would have been. Less pointless if Bianca had stayed for longer yeah. than she did. Bianca's short return was, it was not stupid. Nothing came. Like with if it. she didn't even return and Whitney's just come back from holiday with this guy, mm-hmm. we'd all be like, "Oh, who's this guy? What's yeah. he?" We could have all theories, but we already know who he is. Because they I had think to... it's a bit of a wasted opportunity yeah. there. They had to. They had to release it too quickly, didn't they? Too or too early <laughs> on. Callum knows what that's like. Yeah, he does. <laughs> but um, they didn't have to. Like, imagine if Bianca didn't come back, this storyline would be the same. This guy's turned up, and we'd be thinking, "Who? Who is he?" Mm, you're right. I think that b- having Bianca reveal, <laughs> <laughs> having Bianca reveal the, you know, the, the, who the guy is, as in it's Tony's son, <laughs> mm. didn't really add anything to it. No. So did, they, you're right. Bianca didn't really need to be there for no. that. It's like they said to Bianca, "Come back. We've got this big reveal for you." Mm. So she's like, "Okay." And then it's like, actually. This storyline could have just happened without Bianca, really. I mean, it could have happened with Bianca just done a bit more long term. As in, they didn't have to straight away say, oh, it's Tony's son. Mm. They could have left it that she left still with that kind of enigma of who yeah. this guy is. And then perhaps have her come back. Because she does say in interviews that she wished she could have stayed longer, but she couldn't because of her son turning 18. Mm. But she could have flown back. Her she son. might have just been saying that, though, just to keep mm. Kate happy. Maybe. But then, well, I suppose, but then that leaves her open to return and so if she does return just say for another week in six months time let's just say then it, that would have been a better opportunity to mm. reveal it plus it's odd because he's like interacted with tiff so like, the second tiff meets him mm. or sees a photo but whitney said it's too early for photos she's gonna be like oh he was at the wedding and bianca and mum told me to stay away from him or what if whitney sends a photo to bianca like it's a bit weird, isn't it? How are yeah. they going to keep this under wraps for long enough? But also, if she does send that f- a photo to Bianca or Tiff says, oh, I know him, then how is how are they not going to then involve Bianca to mm. return the story? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? And it's working on the premise that the guy just 
presumes that Bianca isn't going to be there. Won't get on the train and come back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That she's just going to let them get on with their own devices, which was one of the reasons why Tiff was upset with Bianca mm. a few weeks ago, because Bianca did kind of ignore them. Yeah, having Bianca come back has actually created more obstacles <laughs> more in like, the problems. storytelling, yeah. rather than just ignoring the Bianca fact. Now mm. that we've seen her back, mm. it's like, well, why can't she come back again then? So, yeah, it's not helped themselves out for that, that stunt. That's what I'm going to call it. That was, a, that was a rating stunt it, that well, Bianca was. It was, to be honest, wasn't it? Let's and I'm honest. not pleased. Oh, dear. Um, we had Ben and Callum plunge and kiss this week as well. They did. Um, uh, Callum kissed Ben, though. Well, yes, because he kind of just wanted to prove that he wasn't angry at Ben because he accused Ben of ruining his and Whitney's relationship. <laughs> yeah. That if Ben hadn't interfered then he wouldn't have found out he was gay or he wouldn't have let his emotions override the situation you can't ignore this blue eyes who can <laughs> well one person who could perhaps would be phil because he thought that ben and callum were entertaining ben is entertaining well, ben was callum. entertaining yeah yeah, yeah. In that kitchen i was a bit upset that he said don't let dennis walk in on them doing that. what i was upset with sharon was like yeah anyway yeah. my holiday <laughs> yeah Let's go like, on holiday. Like Sharon, you... you should be there being telling Phil off. Mm. Like, he was about to die like last week, Ben was. Now, all of a sudden, Phil doesn't care again. No, no I think he does care. I just think that Phil doesn't want it thrown in his face. Mm. But I think Phil needs to just to take a step back and just forget about his own okay, pig right. ignorance. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, they're having a good time in the kitchen, so screw you, Phil. Amongst the pots and pans. Sharon would have liked walking in on it anyway. She would have, like, popped a party popper <laughs> and thrown her bra around. <laughs> Waved a uh, cowboy hat and a and a rainbow flag. <laughs> yeah, I mean Sharon has got bigger priorities in her mind. So in a way, you can forgive Sharon for not being a bit more liberal or try to impose a bit more of liberalism mm. toward Phil's mind. Kathy would have sh- slapped Phil and told him what. Kathy said, "If he's in love, who cares? Because that's all she cares about." <laughs> My love. takings will be up. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Now Tubbs is here. <laughs> um, I mean, speaking of Sharon's um, predicament, let's move on to Sharon's blackmail, shall we? Well, male's blackmail, mm. because Sharon is the one being blackmailed. Yeah, but Sharon's going to do it classy. <laughs> she will only do it classy. I mean, when she confronted uh, Mel to say that, no, no if you're going to blackmail someone, just do it classy. <laughs> and then Mel retaliated by sending photographs of her son in and the cut park. Hair. And a piece of hair, which is mysterious how she got that piece of hair. Yeah, she did say how. She said, I don't know how she got it, though, but she said she got it from the salon. Denise's salon. What, so what? She waited for Dennis <laughs> to have his hair cut. It wasn't Dennis's. It was just hair. Oh, it's just oh, it's just anyone's yeah. hair. That's hmm. that's insane. <laughs> I mean, that is insane that she did that. But then, I mean, it's just nutty that she got these, and she got those photos printed as well know, on quite photography quick. paper. Yeah. So for either she went to I don't know the local Photoshop and just kind of got them printed on a digital camera. I mean, if I was the person printing those photos, I would be like. Why have you got photos? Maybe she's got Hayley Slater to do them for her. Hayley had, has, um, she used to take photos of Martin, didn't she, remember? Oh, yeah, that's true. Two years ago, do you remember? What, do you that reckon? one scene? I don't remember. <laughs> Only me? I'm trying to forget. <laughs> um, she, But, yeah, I mean, it was just this really, again, it just confused the mm. situation. And also, why is she threatening Dennis? It's really weird. She seems her son just died. Yeah, but Dennis, well, that's exactly the reason she's doing it, because she's saying, like, you know, I've lost my son and I'm not, and I'm not out of the possibility. Her. Yeah, I'm not. It's not out of the realms of possibility that I will now make you lose your own son. Mm. I mean, she's going a bit mad with power because not only does she want £20,000, mm. she only got twelve. But yeah, that's all Sharon could get on the credit card. Well, Sharon then books a holiday, so I'm not sure that is all Sharon could get. Yeah, but I think that's with Phil's money. Well, no, she didn't book it. <laughs> she, she doesn't trying, care that much. She was trying to convince Phil to book it. <laughs> Because it was dirt cheap. No, she booked it in the end. She said to Phil, I've booked it already. Oh. Maybe she used his card, though. Yeah, not only does Mel want that, she also now wants her own private villa in Portugal. Mm. But, a bit much. But also, not just not just someone one you found on the internet. No, one that she's personally signed off <laughs> for Mel. So she's, it's, she's like choosing Mel's villa for her. I mean, if I was Sharon, I'd just choose her with this pokey little villa. Yeah, a little shack. Yeah, a little poo hole where she you know she can just rot because the deal is that once she's got that villa that's it it's forgotten i mean mm. i wouldn't trust mel yeah, but is it because that's what sharon thought about the twin getting louise and kenny out of the house and then she goes no there's more mm. so once you give in to mel well once you do it once with anyone who blackmails yeah. you you're stuck you have to stand up to them from the beginning <laughs> you don't negotiate with owen no that's just a strict rule because if you do they just want more and more and more I mean, Mel is just gone crazy with greed and gri- grievance mm. and just being upset and angry at the world. She's, I mean, she's blaming Sharon. 
I think unnecessarily so. I mean, a lot of Hunter's mess was brought on by Hunter and also her relationship with Ray mm. at the end of the day. So I think Mel needs to kind of take a step back and realise that she's got quite a bit to blame as well. Yeah, but she doesn't want to blame herself. She doesn't want to blame blame her Hunter. So she's got to blame someone. She's got this dirt. Mm. And um, she keeps like bragging about it to Lisa. And Lisa's like, what is it? What is it? She's yeah. like, no, I'm not telling you. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, but because she knows Le- Lisa is like the loose chain in this whole... Mm. Yeah, because she doesn't want to get upset Phil, does she? She can't be bothered. But on about two or three occasions, <laughs> she kept saying, don't go too far because I've fought Phil before. And trust me, you you won't be the one who ends up winning. Mm. It will be very damaging. And I think Lisa just wants an easy life. <laughs> Yeah, Mel just thinks like she's got nothing to lose, so yeah. I'll pressurise pregnant Sharon. How did she get that email with the confidential medical information <laughs> just by one phone call saying, hello, yes, I'm Sharon? <laughs> it was weird, wasn't it? And she said, I'll just send it to my email. Mm. It's like, my email's Mel Owen <laughs> at yeah. e20.com. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's just another name I go by. <laughs> Don't you worry. I mean, unless yeah. she's, again, she's hacked into Sharon's email account. I suppose they do share the same wi-fi if mel's got some kind of competence she can maybe hack it through that i guess well she did hack jacks so but, what ronnie one yeah, what's so, sharon's pass we're gonna be probably dennis, dennis. two <laughs> <laughs> my denny <laughs> denny's in the kitchen eating biscuits <laughs> it's her yeah. password oh well, one <laughs> my my isn't dennis tall underscore yes <laughs> well isn't dennis tall isn't dennis we haven't tall. seen dennis for ages now he's tall and sharon he's a proper growth spurt hasn't he yeah he looks like um, those biscuits <laughs> Uh, I also noticed this week how horrible Keanu was to Sharon. Like he's gone mm, way off her. Yeah, it's very hot and cold, isn't it? She she said something like, "Um, do yeah, what do you think of that?" Or think oh, do, of is me? that what you think of me? Yeah, because she said, "Oh, I've not I've not done anything." He said, "Well, I don't care." He said, "Was well, that what you think of me?" He said, "No, Sharon, I don't think of you at all." Yeah, oh, God, Keanu, calm down. It's because of his new beard and new fuzzy hair and his girl on his arm. <sighs> I think he likes to. Th- I think he likes the whole feeling like a Mitchell thing. And mm. I think now Ben has kind of shown some kind of acceptance toward Keanu. After Louise's strip down, of course, Louise was like, if you're not nice to my boyfriend, then mm. I'm not talking to you anymore. That was like old Louise, which I didn't like. Mm. It's really, And then she went off and it was mean to Tiff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Louise? It's not family, is it? You know, Keanu's brother's girlfriend, they're kind of family now. Oh, God, yeah, they are. It's still horrible. Are. But yeah, I didn't like Louise then. But yeah, Ben's being a bit nicer to Keanu, but he doesn't really trust I, him. I think Ben wants... To, he wants, Again, we're going back to what we said earlier. In, deep inside kind of wants to be good and nice and kind and pure. But there's always going to be that seeping in his veins, that horrible Mitchell blood. Mm. And so... No can't matter, get it out. Yeah. No matter what he tries, he's always going to have that kind of personality. But, but at, the, at the moment, him and Keanu are not BFFs, but... On speaking terms. Yeah. Acquaintance. Acquaintance. Better than him and Sharon, so mm. that's all we can hope for. Um, so we're going to go on now to our feature of the week, where we are welcoming back an old character next week. So we're going to get you all updated on her. And we are here to celebrate another life. <laughs> coming back to the square. I think it's like she's died. <laughs> no, she's come... coming back to life. Yes, she's been resuscitated. She walked through the Hobby City set and uh, came back to us. We are doing This Is Your Life, which is a section when a character comes back to the show after being missing for a few years. We are here to recap everyone of said character. And there's another one of Kate Oates' recast, but Dottie Cotton or Kirsty Cotton mm. is coming back to the show next week. That's right. Um, When you were looking back at the old episodes... There was a trend going on here, we noticed, about recasts and returns in the Kate Oates, John Sen era. Yeah, well, what I've done for everyone is I've watched every single Dossie Cotton scene. (laughs) There is her whole appearance. How many days did it take you? Not too long, actually, but it was... My head was a bit spinning towards the end of it because it, it was a lot of EastEnders. Yeah, it came to the point when we sat down to have something to eat and you said to me, I said, what, what do you want to watch? And you said, not EastEnders. <laughs> no, it, was, it was a lot. But I thought, when I saw her character appearance, I thought she hasn't been in that many, so it can't be that difficult. But it did just went on. But I'm now an expert on Dottie Cotton. So. Yeah, is that, that's your special subject and <laughs> mastermind. Don't ask me anything about her life and I'll be able to tell you. Okay, uh, no, I shan't. Because you're going to tell us all about her right now. We are. Her sort of storyline, she was there for like, two years ish her stories are really split into three is her introduction with nick and trying to poison slash kill grandma dot for some money or whoever did she get that idea from i know well nick says it was her idea all along 
Hmm. And the other one is her sort of feud slash friendship with Tiff Butcher, and then obviously her exit storyline with her real mother. Little tiny Tiff Butcher as well. I know. Little cool Tiff Butcher. <laughs> She's still got a couple of her baby teeth there. Yeah. And then what's interesting about this character is that obviously Nick Cotton, her father, is probably the only character in EastEnders history which is just pure evil like mm. he's not morally gray or anything he's just evil and then yeah. you have the introduction of dotty cotton slash kirsty cotton who is a seven-year-old who seems to be evil manipulative but she's not like 100 percent evil she sees the errors of her ways mm. not quick enough really but she does see <laughs> the errors of her ways and she moralistically kind of takes a more good side with her but mm. i think with the stories that we you, you saw and i saw over your shoulder um <laughs> she didn't it, it would take a lot for her to realize that she was not on the right path she was doing mm. something naughty yeah there was a lot of times when i was watching her career and um i thought oh actually i feel sorry for you but then like she'd do something that, like a few episodes later mm. and be like oh no i don't feel sorry for you but um she was introduced to begin with as dotty which nick had said say that name or make dot fall in love with you mm. so it'd be interesting if they call her Kirsty or Dottie when she comes back in 2019 for the purposes of this I think we should call her Dottie because I've got a I've got a feeling it's going to be Dottie mm. the only thing I can think of is she might come in and she'll start being people say what's your name oh it's Kirsty but, but call me Dottie because yeah. I think they'd want to this to me seems like a legitimate way of getting Dot go out the soap oh for me, it does. It feels like this is this is now going to be part. The torch for for the uh, Cottons has been passed down now to Dottie. I mean, Dottie Cotton did say to Nick they were planning to take some money. Um, so she met Dot, and Nick sold Dottie to her in like this weird kind of like if you want to keep her safe, mm. buy her off me. And that was Nick's sort of plan. And then later on, you found out that Dottie was like, actually, Dad, we could play the long game here. I've just seen that she's got life insurance, and she's going to put me in her will. So if we play the long game and kill her mm. we'll get more money so uh, yeah. dotty is kind of like evil-ish because she's the one masterminding over nick so i wonder whether she is playing the long game still yeah she's back now she took dr leg's few, um fortune well that's exactly it i wonder if she's after that money because dot if dot was slightly wealthy then imagine the millions <laughs> she could be rolling in now mm. and also there's a scene where pat warned dot and said she reminds her of what janine was like at that age so we've got like a new Janine. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I think this is where it kind of seems to be heading. I think mm. there's been such an outcry by uh, fans for Janine to return. And I just didn't, I think it would be too easy to bring back Janine. But, yeah, but also make their own Janine. Yeah. Create a new Janine. I mean, I think, I think that works nicer as well. I think you've got the character that you can mold into becoming this character. We mm. did think for a little while, we talked about Stuart and Rainey becoming this new Janine couple. If Janine was like married, you know, mm. but um, it makes sense to make a younger character more and if she, it'd be interesting if she's like more business minded so she has that kind of manipulative way also mm, well and, she's going off to university when right. she comes back but in the end when nick is going through it he's gonna they start making her feel like she's got dementia in the past and making her forget things when she hasn't and they're stealing her medication crushing it up and giving it all to her but at this once. is when she That's was the plan this is when originally yes. she was on okay so this isn't something that's happening now no 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 nick's dead um but that's when dotty's kind of has that moment of clarity because she she's been told by nick that her mum was killed and that's how he got custody of her which she wasn't killed mm. and she's wanting a life where she can stay in one place with one family forever mm. and that's what she thinks she's getting with nick but obviously she finds out that he hasn't got any plans for that so that's why she then backtracks on what she's doing and tries to kill her dad instead of dot yes and that's when nick leaves and that's when dotty decides to stay this is when also when nick gets a little bit i think nick feels like he's been betrayed and no one betrays nick no. you know nick or, can nick's is okay fair game mm. for nick to and do he's that outsmarted as well by yeah um, dotty at seven by an eight-year-old old. yeah and a seven eight-year-old <laughs> child so this is new territory for nick mm. and one that kind of confuses him and also really winds him up quite badly doesn't it mm. and he gives the money back to dot as well so he doesn't actually end up getting anything but she just gets lumbered with a child and then the rest of her middle storyline is how dot finds it tiring and exhausting having a young child in the house and i guess dotty's not really getting what she needs so she's obviously acting out and it's when she's finding it hard to make friends with tiffany and there's a lot of like not bullying but they don't like each other mm. but they want to be friends with each other 
but they're not sort of thing. But doesn't Nick do something once he finds out that Dottie has betrayed him? That's when he um, kidnaps her and takes her hostage. Yeah. So again, something <laughs> that's quite traumatic to a seven-year-old child for this to happen. That's true. He, and he starts a fire in the cafe as well, almost mm. killing. Does he almost kill Dottie? He does, but Bradley saves her. Ah, so this relationship with Bradley, also because Dot's his grandmother mm. and Dottie, is um, even more established. So she becomes more intertwined into the, the family, the Cotton mm. family. And that's where she sees a real side of Nick, because Nick's told her that Dot behind the scenes is actually really horrible and nasty and abusive, when obviously we know Dot isn't mm. really. But yeah, we also have like the feud as well with Tiffany Butcher, mm. which we'll, I'm assuming will be brought back because obviously Tiffany's in it now still. Yeah, I mean, there's a few characters that were in the soap when Dottie was first in the soap mm. too. So there's Tiffany. Sonia. Sonia is there. Sonia gave, gives um, her a bit of a telling off too when she uh, gets her nan into trouble. She does. You can see through Dottie because it's our Sonia. <laughs> Bobby. Bobby Bill is also Yes, there. they went up against each other in a talent competition, which yes. they had to sit through. Which Bobby had uh, to mine to roll in, roll in, roll in, roll hide, <laughs> while a more talented child, which wasn't really much more talented, <laughs> sang the song on his behalf. Uh, Ian Bill gave him £50, but that's got nothing to do with Dottie whatsoever. No, but she has a lot, a few connections which mm. she can sort of um, befriend, I guess. I'm assuming that her and Tiff maybe... They can hook back onto. Yeah. I mean, this goes back to what I said at the top of this section, which is that Kate Oates seems to like 2010. A lot of things in 2010... Yeah, 2009, 2010 are very similar. Very similar to what's been going on recently on mm. the soap. The Saeed and Christian storyline. Hello, Callum, or Balum, the storyline. Yeah. You know, it's all very similar. Yeah. It's very similar to the storyline with Sean as well, mm. and Gene, mm. where he was he ran off with Amy. <laughs> so, there it is. It's like, okay. Yeah. But So yeah, obviously well, she's a fan, so she's brought back Dottie. But it's good because obviously all, the, all the right pieces are there for this reunion to happen mm. with Bobby and Tiff. I mean, Bobby and Tiff also, when Bobby came back, they there was there was a, there was a hint to say that they knew one another mm. too. So would it be hinted? Do you think with Dottie, or do you think that Dottie it will be very much like oh now Dottie's thrown into the mix, everyone's gonna all the old school are gonna get together, Whitney yeah, and Tiff. Because there's Bobby. a few age gaps, but not massively. There's like a few years between them all, so there's no reason not to. But it depends if she's coming back as a villain, like. Mm. A, a soap bitch or not really but um she ended up leaving with her real mum she she turns up at dot's door uh, her real mum sandy and says no i'm not dead nick had just has taken dot um, more of nick's has lies. taken kirsty mm. and that's when dot thinks oh actually maybe she's better off with her actual family and that's how she leaves she just goes off with her and then you hear a few things throughout the year saying they moved to florida and they and then i think the last time you hear of her was moved to swansea mm. so obviously kept in touch with dot now she's back for university studies but it's interesting to know how they got back into contact so that dotty would then return with dot which is impending mm. next week on the it is. and they keep it the all under wraps so. mm. i mean it is a shame because like the original actress she was quite decent actually now i've watched a year and a half worth of extended in like three days i mean she wasn't particularly well liked by the press but i don't think that's the actress's fault it's mm. more the character i think people found her a bit irritating a lot of uh, writers tv critics kind of unkindly to a child a child of nine years old found her a little bit difficult to watch a bit difficult to... yeah which is unfair because she's quite a layered character all these things have happened to her and obviously she's been off our screens for nine years so it'll be interesting to see where she is now hmm. she's got a nose piercing so oh, well, there you go that's, <laughs> that's reinvented the, the wheel haven't we so she is coming back what do you think is the intention then do you think she is going to be malicious I, don't, I think it'd be too easy for her just to come back and be too too nasty yeah, i don't want quickly. her to be nice because like bobby's come back and he's they haven't done that with bobby mm. and they haven't really got that and they've made Stuart nice so I, I think we need like a not out and out villain, like a bit like Janine, where you like like her, but yeah, you she's root also for her. You still bitch. root for her. Yeah. yeah. Do you think they're going to start treading lightly to begin with? So it's like a simple story where she tries to take Keegan away from Tiff, you know, like a, the ultimate like revenge. Now Tiff has revealed her secret to Keegan. Yeah. That now she's going to be taken away. I mean, you don't know if she's going to be involved with Bex because they they're both assuming going to live in Dot's house together and mm. both go to university. So. But we don't really know what's going down Bex's route, do we? She even take down Stuart. Well, yes. But this is but this is another thing. Stuart's daughter. This this has smells of Stuart's daughter to me. It's like when she was introduced when Stuart was in hospital. When Zara was introduced. I, I, it, to me, this feels like this is what 
could have been Zara's role, mm. but it, 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 because she could have been someone who manipulated Dot too. If you think about it, she could work with Stuart or have Stuart's traits. That's true. But it makes better sense that they've used Dotty as the character for that. But it just seems too obvious that they're going to be. It, it's she is going to use dot to get her money i think she's going to use dot as a base but people around her are going to get into trouble because of her mm. all people are suspicious of her and she actually has no intention for that mm. like it could be anything you don't know if her mum's still alive because she was an alcoholic when she had a one-night stand with nick which nope. you'd have to be i was about to say yeah <laughs> would you? um so you don't know whether she re- she said she was clean and sober when she picked dotty up again on her last appearance but you don't know what's happened mm. if she's alive or suddenly died and that's why she's back with dot or do you yeah. think she knows she had a brother who died to the hands of her father? They didn't mention Ashley, Nick and Dot when they were talking, so I'm assuming oh, so she's still it's aware. been mentioned. But she also, will. does she know that Dot is the one that ended up killing Nick? Mm, that's so an interesting that well. twist, isn't it? Mm. That, um, yeah, she, she so there's room away. for high drama for Dot and Dotty. I mean, it's perfect. It's just that it worries me that they're going to... I don't think they can associate too much with June Brown, just because... She's great. I love June Brown, don't get me wrong, and I love Dot Cotton, but I just don't think she's got it in her to do too much drama. Yeah. So anymore. is this like her exit storyline? Yeah, like... so for me, that's what it feels mm. like. It's going to be she's passing on the torch to Dottie. <laughs> Dottie's going to be the, the little bit of a mix, and yeah. and it makes good sense that she would be like the new Janine as well, because like I say, the fans are crying out for a new Janine character. Yeah, that's what we want. But there you go, that was Dottie Cotton's life so far. In the mm, past. More to come. What do you guys think will be the future stories of Dottie Cotton? You can email us eastendersweekly at gmail.com or just get in touch with us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram or our YouTube channel. And there you go. That was the insight into Kirsty slash Dottie Cotton's life. <laughs> That was interesting about Dotty Cotton, wasn't it? It was. Something I thought we should quickly expand on is the talent show that they uh, had. <laughs> really? And more specifically, because it does link into what we're about to talk about. Okay. Tiff's talent at singing when she sang Firestar. Or shouting and doing the same <laughs> jump. By Prodigy. And doing that face when she kept staring with her eyes open. <laughs> yeah, she did little Tiff. Yeah, because her and Dotty had a big feud and they had a fight and... Mm. They stole things, they put each other in bins. But they've yeah. grown up and we're going to be talking about Tiff now. Grown yes, up Tiff. she's grown right up. And um, she was celebrating her boyfriend Keegan's birthday. 18. Yeah, Key in the Door. To the pub. Is Key the Door 18? Don't know what Is that it means. 21? Oh. What's Key in the Door mean? But it's the age you get the key to the house, so you can just go in and... It's, it's quite an old-fashioned thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone does that anymore. The, I had a key to the house like, I think at 12. I think it's 18. But, Yes, but that's what I'm saying. It's an old fashioned. You used to be able to well, get. In the old days, you left your doors open. Yeah, you could leave your child out in the pram and no one <laughs> would steal him or her. They used to be able to get these big keys from like stationers or car shops. Through the keyhole. Yeah, kind of. Like what they give away. Yeah, it's the prize at the end. And it, I'm sure it said 18 on it. <laughs> oh, I've never heard of I don't know why so I've just know. started a, a conversation about 18 keys. Move on. I think we should. Because Tiff baked a cake and brought it over. Not a key. No, there wasn't a key inside of it. It might have been a prison cake. <laughs> um, Gray had bought him a laptop. But keep it secret because Mitch is not to know. But Mitch, will, but Mitch does find out, but then forgives him. <sighs> and now they're, they, they're amicable with one another. But don't take away from Keegan's birthday, please. Okay. Because it's Keegan's birthday. All right, sorry. It, was, it wasn't much of a party. Well, he had two parties, didn't he? He had one at his house. Mm-hmm. which was more of a kind of noodles. a buffet yeah with you know a kind of tailor style party so off food that you which is, which freezes <laughs> but it doesn't cook very well in the oven but then a more upper class posher do where there's bound to be an argument and there was between louise and tiff about tiff's history and past oh yeah it was at the posh house chantelle and gray's house wasn't mm. it and that's where obviously they're on touchy ground because of what happened last week between them and they didn't get intimate with each other so keegan's like really standing up for tiff and being like, don't talk to my girl like that. Well, Keanu st- stands up for her as well. Mm. I think Louise just shows herself up. <laughs> Again, really? Yeah. Louise kind of reverting back to her horrible snobbish ways, which mm. she kind of does every now and then. Just when you think she's livened up and kind of gotten better, she, she then goes back to herself. Oh, it's a shame. And then Keegan and Tiff actually go back and have like a little chat again. Like they similar, basically the same chat they had last week, but she tells him that she has had sex before which he says he hasn't, doesn't want that to be an issue. But then she also says that she was actually raped. So 
and then he sort of understandably he's quite shocked about it and doesn't really know what he to doesn't say. know how to react mm. and he you know tiff says i don't want this to change between us and this shouldn't be something that is what our relationship is now based upon you know you knowing this information about me and i think it's, it becomes a bit too difficult for keegan to kind of register straight away mm. and so he is understandable he leaves yeah of course he is he needs time to kind of obviously this doesn't detract from this is this ultimately is Tiff's problem and this mm. is Tiff has coped with it she said it a few times I've dealt with it you know I've moved on and I feel that you need to do the same but understandably and I think Tiff was to be fair to her credit she understood it too that Keegan had to have time to understand it too and um, so she gave him that time of one night <laughs> <laughs> until they met up again yeah. and then keegan kind of was too enthusiastic then to kind of prove to tiff that he was happy and you know oh no you know i've you know i understand now and let's let's just move on and we can be happy together and nothing's changed between us and then it was tiff then and then said you know let's slow put, it down yeah let's now slow it down because we're yeah. now going too fast we're going too quickly the opposite direction of yeah. where i wanted this to be between us i mean she phoned whitney for advice and whitney was too busy sunning herself on the beach busy with Leo, wasn't she? yeah well and, and the off comment later on at the end of the week when whitney comes home and says oh you left an answer message what was that about <laughs> no, it doesn't matter yeah it's all right i saw it it's fine i still don't like the um this tiff storyline like how it just came out of nowhere and seemed really like unnecessary to have tiff be another um female victim it's like and it has it, I don't know how it's been handled that well. Like how she just goes, oh, I've dealt with it myself. I think it depends on how you defy victim, though. Mm. I think it depends on how it's been. But it's so embraced. close since like the Ruby storyline as well. It's like. But then I think again, I I don't remember if I mentioned it when we talked about it the first time round. But I think it's been deliberately done that way to show there's two ways of. More how, than one way. Yeah. There's more than one way to deal with something. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make either way the better way. It's just that Ruby dealt with it in a weird way. <laughs> <laughs> where she had a man come chop over. off his um where, things. Where she um catfished someone and then attempted <laughs> to chop off his thingy. Mm -hmm. While Tiff dealt with it in arguably a more mature way, perhaps, mm -hmm. where she's not suppressed it. But has she? I think she's, that's, she's, that's, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. She's kind of just been like, oh, I've dealt with it. Mm, I like, th but have you obviously haven't. No. But... but I think, no, she has. I think she has dealt with it. I think she, she's dealt with it the best she can mm. because she doesn't want to make it anyone else's issue. And I think that's what it came down to. I think she didn't want to make it keegan's issue it was always going to be a personal issue between her um and i suppose and her uncle jack mm. um the, i suppose if she thought that keegan knew well what she thought was that it might ruin their relationship yeah and it's a secret where it's one of those things that when you start a relationship with someone there's always going to be secrets where you don't want someone to know straight away but when it comes to truth out with the truth will out especially in EastEnders <laughs> that should be their slogan it was their slogan that's why I said it oh I'm sorry the all truth I, will out all I remember is everyone's talking about it oh yeah that North East South West Enders <laughs> and yeah and i mean something as personal as this is quite tricky to kind of open up and be mm. completely expose yourself to because this is exposing her isn't it this is making her a very vulnerable person to keegan and that information being given to the wrong person would be incredibly dangerous i mean you know she's lucky with keegan because keegan mm. seems to be yeah, if she did this like keegan generous. a year ago he obviously would have um oh it would have been completely spiraled different. out of um, yeah. control but i mean it did affect his business plans this week a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Ikra, we learned a bit about Ikra as well. Yeah. She has a business degree, just not using it. Well, she's wasting it, according That's to Greg. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he just casually said it to her. Like, they're not even, they don't even know each other that no. well, do they? That's a waste. And then yeah. walked out of the cafe. She decided to go into partnership with Keegan's questionable business mm. of selling sandwiches. Told Ian to go somewhere. Which is a bit of a strange move because no, they're they have using no kitchen. they have no kitchen exactly they're using <laughs> Wolford East as the kitchen and um, I don't think any kitchen where Keegan lives in or where Ikra lives has a hygiene rating of any sort mm. which as we know when the Masoods were trying to open up their curry stall in the market they illegally were making the curry exactly so she's Ikra's living in a flat on her own now Robbie's gone because she lives in Robbie's oh, I flat I forgot about that which Ikra's is moved yeah. there's, been, there's been so many moves. Mm. That, because now Robbie's out, moved. We found out this week that Lola is living with Jay. I know. Remember last week we were like, "Where's Lola sleeping?" <laughs> Still not seen though. Oh, she's seen. Oh, no. the couple, she? We like had one seconds. scene today. She had her token scene. She <laughs> gets her, her weekly pay. paycheck. Yeah, she gets her paycheck. <laughs> so we learned that about Ikra, and she tells Ian where to go, quits, and um, teams up with Keegan, and sort of gives him like a pep talk about him and Tiff. Mm. Um, and he made forty pound profit, <laughs> which is good. And then twenty pound went to her. 50, 50. So a whole day's worth for £20. So <laughs> this business needs some 
ICRA management, I think. Well, she needs to use that degree. Business studies. I yeah. mean, she's been, yeah, she's been um, working three years to get this qualification. <laughs> to make £20 profit so far is a bit, a bit bad. Mm. But Has it's Keegan nice. named his business yet? Have we got a name? Uh, Keegan's Kickers or something? No. <laughs> no, they, they said last week, didn't they? They were calling it... Oh, goodness, I've forgotten now. Oh, they did say it, did they? No, Tiff gave a suggestion for a oh. name. No, I'm not using that. It was like something sandwiches or something like that. Oh, I wish I could remember now. Tailored, tailor-made sandwiches or oh, something like that. that's all yeah. right then. Tailor-made sandwiches. Is it for a tailor-made? And so is Tiff. Ta- no, Ikra's the maid, Keegan's the tailor, and together, sandwiches. <laughs> They're like two bits of bread, aren't they? They With are. With a Tiff in the middle. Who's the same Tiff the sandwich? <laughs> uh, the other half of the story, and we mentioned earlier how Grey bought a laptop for Keegan. Mm. We'll just keep it a away from Mitch um, but he did find out and they had like a little thing at the party where they kind of like forgave each other and they shook hands and promised to start their relationship over again yeah build bridges Gray said that he was being a bit provocative but not the good kind of provocative the kind of poker with a stick kind of provocative <laughs> and that they both were going to sl- wipe the slate clean and start again clean slayer <laughs> That's it. Mitch again begrudgingly said yes because Mitch is a horrible person mm. and we're meant to like him and support him and think he's great. But we don't. We're so... going to have to because he's going to outgrain in like a year and a half. No, I don't think it will be Mitch. I think Mitch will find out, but I don't think he'll be the one who ultimately finds out. In fact, someone already has found out now. A certain oh, no. nurse. A nurse that's been in the soap before. Mm. Gave birth to Bobby Bill. <laughs> Not gave birth. Helped um, deliver, sorry. Yes. Bobby Bill. Yeah. Um, yeah, because... Chantelle cut herself like cleaning up or she dropped something she cut her hand mm. so she had to go to hospital after a moment of passion upstairs that's important mm. well that's what she said wasn't it well I think that's what it is I think he gets that's where she had bruises oh, what, on so her he wrist. genuinely gets really violent during when they went upstairs, during sex yeah. as well so that's why she had those fresh bruises on her arms oh that's a bit because <laughs> he came down with the towel drop didn't he yeah, that was... even though he's an abuser they're still teasing us <laughs> I know. It's mean, isn't it? Just, just, kind of, just, to, just to parade this very, very, very good looking guy <laughs> in, in front towel. of us. And then have us sit in the back of our minds going, but he's an abuser. Yeah. We're not meant to like him. And then tell us that about him. So yeah, she saw the bruises on her arms, but she didn't say like, I know you have. She said, if you have a friend. Mm. And then she gave like this chapstick with like a number hidden, yeah. hidden on it, but not hidden very well. Well, no, 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 no. He knew it was a for an abusing hotline because he'd done a case before and the woman he did the case for so he's actually Had done one. yeah he's actually done a case in court for a woman being abused by her husband mm. i mean there's irony isn't there yeah, that's sick. Th- yeah that's pretty sick i mean it was interesting when he found out about that and he like got angry and he like told her to get out of the room he had like a semi breakdown it was i don't know i've not seen that before mm. for this type of storyline where he didn't want to hurt her Obviously, because she's pregnant, I guess. So he told her to get out of the room and then he had to get his anger out and he had to punch the mirror. But then he like broke down and cried as well. So Yeah, but I've got, I think he's 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 realising that he's uncontrollable. Mm. He is really Jekyll and Hyde. He, he really is. It's like there's these two personalities in him and he's he's found a, a spot where he can maybe warn Chantelle away. But I wonder, as you uh, you just said, you said because she's pregnant, he kind of ushered his mm, hold her to like leave. That's the only reason. But do you think that's the reason then? Or do you think he would have done it whether... She, if she hadn't been pregnant because he's now actively looking for help mm, i think it's because she's pregnant so I you mean, think he's only caring for her because she's carrying I his child so. i'm guessing this is what they did the past two times because they've got two kids mm. so i'm guessing that's what he used to do he doesn't want to hurt the child but yeah but he's never he's never looked actively for help and now he is or he or yeah, so he is, yeah, says he is, is. He though because he said oh i'm gonna go to therapy and then he says oh i i don't want to admit to someone that i'm like this i can't i can't do it so that's when he doesn't go to his first one and then later in the week, he says he's booked back in again. Mm. Well, that's but when that's when is he booked back in again? Well, he said he booked back in again before he found the lip balm, before he found that in mm. Chantel's pocket, and he was angry. I think he was angry because he thought that Chantel had asked for help. Yeah, or told someone. To- well, told someone, but also that she didn't. He thought that she didn't believe that he could get the help or he mm. would help himself. And so again, he was upset because Chantel almost didn't believe in him and so she, he says a few things that like you know do you love me do you care about me uh, you know always wants that recognition by Chantel that what he's doing is the right thing to mm. do because it's weird that he's questioning whether he thinks this is the right thing to do still whether he thinks this is going to be any help I mean until we actually see him in that therapy room I'm not believing him he's too um proud isn't he in like a weird way I know proud's not like the right word but he's 
too proud to go to therapy, I think, mm. at the moment. He's a really proud guy, isn't he? He but, just um, doesn't want to admit mm. fault in himself, which goes, again, to when we, we return to the beginning when we first saw his abuse. And it was never his fault. It was always her fault. Mm. And, and normally he, as we said, abusers normally ask for forgiveness, but he's never really asked for forgiveness. But he did this week. He kind of yeah, and showed he's a crying. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's very strange. We, we know that a little bit about his past, how his mum died when he was young and he doesn't get on with his dad. Mm. So maybe if we do see him go to therapy session, we can learn a bit more about why. It looks like they're going to look into why he's like this Mm. rather than just have him be a wife beater and then leave the show. Yeah. And I think that's a really interesting path to take because you could just do the same domestic violence storyline. And I don't want to sound like it's the same as, you know, copy and paste the same Mm. domestic storyline. But it could be like Chantel kills him at Christmas. Like something like that. You don't want that. Yeah. We don't want something over the top and soapy particularly. It'd be more interesting to actually kind of see this get in depth into his side. mind yeah, yeah get into his mind and, and what see him in his therapy sessions and see him going through this i'm not saying what he's doing is right i'm not saying what he, you know we should forgive him for what he's no, done i mean either way he has to well Chantel has to leave him mm. um but that doesn't mean he can't get therapy no but they just won't be together yeah i think they, they you know if if she does ultimately leave him i think it'd be okay if you still learn the journey of gray's Hmm. you know healing I, I don't know really the right term to use like i say i don't want to i'm not condoning what ray does is okay i'm not saying that you know nothing he does or has done to Chantel is okay it's it's the complete opposite it's not okay but it'd be an interesting story to follow to see to what s- is yeah what the, the path is hmm. to cause it and what they're what he does if there is any to therapy heal. to yeah, yeah. And, if you can. and if there is exactly if there is any therapy and if there isn't any therapy you know it's, you know it's just an interesting path to take well, the charity that they're working for on their website it says there is help they can have therapy but likelihood is you're not going to stay together you need mm. to get out and they need to move on to someone else or move into another life but there is therapy and a chance to because that relationship that relationship with Chantel could be again I'm not blaming Chantel for this I'm just saying that <laughs> that relationship with Chantel could be as damaging for both of them that so if they stay together then it's probably not such a great idea mm. and so to separate would be the right path to take I'm hoping please everyone who's listening to this that I'm not <laughs> sounding like a horrible person You're and horrible. I'm getting it wrong please we let me you. know if I'm I'm, if I'm misstepping what I'm saying <laughs> and I do apologize in advance well guess what we're going to move on to lighter things now what fruit based sexual innuendo oh yeah oh yeah just what I need me too fancy a, a finger of a banana <laughs> a, a finger of a banana yeah finger you call a bunch of bananas fingers do you yeah Is that what Martin says he does. Fancy some yes. plums. Oh, yeah. What a juicy melon. <laughs> and other innuendo. Well, fancy a big green courgette. No. Oh. <laughs> no, <I don't. laughs> That's actually surprised me. I thought you liked a courgette in your mouth. No, it's time for Martin Fowler's Five a Day. And this is where I give Ben, I pose a question to Ben, and Ben needs to give me five answers to that question within 30 seconds. Mm. The rules haven't changed. They Very stay tricky. the same. Since episode one, the rules have been the same. <laughs> this is a... An original game, and a game everyone enjoys playing. Classic. Like EastEnders. Like Martin. And his fruit and veg store. And his b- bunch of fingered bananas. <laughs> so since 1985, EastEnders has had a wealth of characters that have come and go, but who just doesn't want to leave the dense, foggy air of Walford? According to an article from the Radio Times written on the 8th of July this year, who are the five longest-serving characters who have been in the soap? This doesn't include one continuous tenure, but longest period over many different appearances. All answers are correct at the time of recording. <laughs> Okay, so I need you to list the top five, the five longest residents of Wolford in 30 seconds. Do you feel up to the challenge? Yeah, Yeah. always up for it. Martin. (laughs) Martin's not an answer and time hasn't started yet. Oh, isn't he? That surprised me. So, five longest running characters starting from now. Sharon Mitchell. Sharon Mitchell has played by Letitia Dean. She's been in 2066 episodes since 1985. (laughs) Uh, Ian Beale. Ian Beale, Adam Woodyatt, since 1985, 3,192 episodes since, 19, since, 1990, since 1985. Kathy Beale, maybe. Gillian Taylor, fourth, mm. 1985, 1,586 episodes. Doc Cotton. Doc Cotton, yes. And you've got one more to get while you're thinking Doc Cotton was in it. Oh. 1985, 2,252 episodes. Pauline Fowler. No, that's Pat incorrect. Butcher. And time is 
up. I'm I afraid. got Pat Butcher in. Pat Butcher's not the right answer. What? Mm-hmm. Is she is? No, she's not. Well, that's just ridiculous. So, what do you mean she's not? She's been in it forever. Doesn't matter. And Martin. There's one other person who's been in it. Not forever, but for a very long time. Since 1990. Phil, Phil Mitchell. He, well, it... Pat's been in it longer than Phil. No, she hasn't. In order, <laughs> Ian Beale has been in 3,192 episodes. Phil Mitchell has been in 2,975 yeah, episodes. Pat must have been in more episodes than Kathy, because Kathy was dead for like 10 years. No, she hasn't. Dot has well... been in it for 2,252 episodes. Sharon's been in 2,066. I'll be checking this up Kathy on Beale... Wolford Web because they've got an official, actual proper list of characters not this radio times rubbish well let me i tell you what i can do for you ben i can help you out right now um if to the listeners at home this will be flawless it'll be the next thing they listen to but to ben he's going to have an agonizing two minutes while i look up how many episodes pat butcher has been in eastenders so do bear with us listeners (laughs) so i wrote to the uh radio times (laughs) And they've given me an apology. It reads, Here at the Radio Times, we try to give our information as factually correct as we can. But unfortunately, on this occasion, we were wrong. (laughs) By doing a simple Google search, you have revealed that actually Pat St. Clement, who plays Pat Butcher, Mm. had been in the soap for a longer period of time than Gillian Tailforth, knocking her out of the top five. (laughs) Where, in fact... Pat has played the character in 2,191 episodes Mm -hmm. to actually leapfrogging above Tish Dean. Good. That's what I expected. And you should always get your source from Wolford Webb. I I tried to get some information from Wolford Webb. And some of this this does come from Wolford Webb. I just didn't see that part. That's (laughs) all. So I apologise to Wolford Webb. I apologise to all the listeners out there. Anyone who's And I got five out of five then, technically. You got five stars. Good. Five stars out of five. I actually got six out of five. Hmm. If this was so. like, you know, yeah. no, you didn't because you didn't get Steve McFadden. So technically, oh, yeah. you only got four out of five because no. you didn't actually get Steve McFadden. No, ah. Yeah. But anyway, um, let us know how you got on at home and let us know if we're still wrong and that that list is very inaccurate and that I should be shamed and walk down the road naked with a bell ringer behind me. Um, and that was Martin Fans Five a Day. After all that fruit and veg, I'm going cold turkey. Oh. Lock me in a room mm-hmm. with a bit of water. A bucket. <laughs> a oh, yeah, just one. You can use the same bucket to wash as you would for your toilet. And some mouthwash, please. Oh, no, you're not having any of that in your in your room of contemplation. I mean, Rainey's got very desperate this week of her um, addiction. She's attacking Sonia, demanding pills somehow. Well, she thinks that Sonia has this supply of drugs up in her house in dot's house somewhere yeah and she's like blaming sonia for like a bad back or ribs because she gave her the The heimlich Heimlich. yeah i was a bit upset that sonia didn't stand up to her actually she like called stuart and opened the door for stuart it's like sonia could have stood up to rainy no she did she call stuart i think she got almost out the door door. no she unlocked the door for him because the door was locked i think didn't she no, if my, my memory says me right, she tries to run away. She gets to the door. No, she goes upstairs to it. pick up pills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, she... then when she's upstairs off screen, phone Stuart. Rainy's gone mad, get to Dot's quick. I'll unlock the door for you. She runs down, unlocks the door quick, and Stuart barges in. Oh, okay. And takes her off. I'm glad you're here to fill in the gaps, because I would never <laughs> work that one out. Off screen, you see, you've got to fill them in yourself. Yeah, but, I mean, there's enough time to kind of... Although I suppose it's just the laborious stuff, you know, mm. you don't really want to see. But Rainey should be happy because she's celebrating. Her and Stuart have been together <laughs> for six weeks. That's so weird, isn't it? He was, like, obsessed with this six-week thing. Is that, like, a milestone in, like, AA? A, what's it called? Well, AA? Well, no, it's... um Alcoholics Anonymous. That's alcoholism. Yeah, yeah but but that's not... She, she They don't go to that. No, but, like, they're, like, groups. It's, like, a six-week... Uh, token like sure. a milestone maybe that's why he because it's a bit of a weird number to be happy about i think it's more that he's he genuinely feels like he's found his person his <laughs> love which is rainy and so he will do anything for her mm. and i think rainy knows this as we said before and now rainy's kind of taking full advantage, advantage yeah. of the fact I mean, it that it was a bit adam's just... family wasn't it like the the way they were sat on a coffin and both well acting, for the anniversary lunch yeah and they're both acting like complete odd couple weirdos <laughs> yeah they this... were a bit it was like very Adam's family. But they are the me. outcasts, aren't they? And they, they see themselves as the outcasts. Mm. I mean, Stuart wears it almost like a badge that he's still not particularly been embraced by the community. Like mm. he's, he's he's not really allowed in the Vic still. And that's like the, the hub. 
<laughs> like if you can't go into the Vic, then you kind of get li- left out of a lot of story that happens around mm. the square throughout. That's true. I mean, they are building him slightly because he's now living with Callum. And so he's sharing the flat with Callum. And even Callum said that he can't believe that he's, you know, build this relationship back with Stuart now. I think Stuart is happy with the very tight knit community that he's built himself in Walford, which is Dot, Sonia, Rainey and Callum. Callum yeah. Which Soon is... Ben. And Dottie. Oh, yeah. And Bex, he's good friends of Bex as well. Oh yeah, yeah, he helped Bex out. Mm. So he's got the kind. Of, well, he's helped Bex once, and and so he feels that perhaps with that he can now help Rainy. He helped Bex out of a hole, so maybe Rainy can be also helped out of a hole. I just don't know if Rainy and Stuart are a good idea because she's gone downhill since being with him. Six weeks seems to be her. You know, she was Rainy the businesswoman before in all these smart suits. Mm. Now Max has gone off on another holiday with Baby Abby. She's a very well-travelled baby. Mm. I'm surprised her eardrums haven't perforated <laughs> with all the flights she's taking. But they just Max has gone on holiday, apparently. Yeah, but we don't... Just drop that in. It could be anywhere, can it? I'm sure we'll see with pictures Shirley. of him. It could be with Shirley. <laughs> He'll be, I'm sure he would have had a holiday fling, or is having a holiday yeah, fling. Yeah, I bet when he speak. comes back, he's had a fling with some blonde woman. Yeah, again, further further upsetting Rainy to the point, the <laughs> brink of insanity. I mean, this is the thing with Rainy. I think Rainy thinks she can live this independent life, but depends so hard on everyone. one person. Mm. Not, not even everyone. She just, she kind of Lapses. hooks herself on, yeah. Mm. And this time it's Stuart. And the problem is, is that Stuart likes it. Exactly. <laughs> he's up for it. Yeah. He's, up for a challenge. He's Yeah, he's reciprocating it. While Max didn't really... Max, it was a deal, wasn't it? It was all more yeah, of a business, business deal. So And so as much as Rainy kept giving and giving and giving, she was never getting anything back from Max. But with Stuart, she only has to give a little and Stuart, gives all back mm. and so she's yeah she's proper playing Stuart and again is this the redemption arc that we're, they're desperately trying to give to Stuart it's like I mean Stuart was ne- I don't think Stuart is never meant to stay here for this no, long no he was meant to be off yep he was meant to be gone by ago. now yeah but and... I mean he he is running the thing to me that could end up being a bit of a boring character now like they're making him so vanilla to mm. me it's like I I don't know I kind of want a bit more from Stuart again yeah. Like, it's quite a U-turn, massively, for Stuart. Like, he doesn't even stif- seem like the same character. He's almost, like, Gary Minty territory, I could see in, like, a year's time. Well, if you think about it, Minty used to be Phil's right arm man. You know, mm. he used to be the muscle. Yeah. And so, and they, again, as you say, I suppose Minty didn't really do anything as bad as what no, Stuart No, but, like, the way that they've done. changed Stuart now, like, I can see in, like, two years' time he's stayed around and he's going to be one of those characters, which is, like, the worst thing. Well, and gets himself a best friend and yeah. then they start, like, a business together or something like mm. that. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's I the can worst see thing that, that too. You don't want to be a Gary or Minty. Oh, no, no. You don't want to leave on a boat with a girl who doesn't love you. <laughs> Let's just say that much for sure. I mean, how did Minty even leave? Does anyone know? I don't. Didn't Did Minty he marry leave? someone? No, he know. left on the tube, didn't he? Singing. Or was that what <laughs> Gary... No, no, yeah, he was. Gary was on the boat. Yeah, Gary was on the boat with um, Dawn. Yeah, that was bad enough. It was awful. Um, and yeah, Minty left before that singing remember he was going he went up onto no, the tube i didn't watch minty i'm afraid yeah no that, i'm fairly certain that's how he left well that's not what we want for stewart what, so, yes. i want stewart like jumping off a dam or something wow with a body i don't know with something body. exciting <laughs> <laughs> but um, i don't want him to turn into this like caricature which he almost did i feel yeah he's slowly so i don't want to be there. bored of stewart but rainy she's going full lying like, to get mm. out of that locked room that she was in. Mm. I, I reckon Stuart's got an exciting few weeks to come, but we'll talk about that perhaps in the, in the end of the show, Who Won the Week? Oh, little tease. Something to look forward to, everyone. <laughs> but Rainy ended up, she, like, put on her good Christian hair. Yeah, her <laughs> crazy her hair is gone, yeah. She's looking a bit more presentable. <laughs> yeah, she was sat all upright with a sensible top, not low cut. <laughs> um, So she got out of the room eventually that she was locked in, which, actually, thinking about it, where's has Callum and Stuart been sharing a bedroom then? They must have been. No, I think Stuart was sleeping on the sofa. Oh, okay. Because Callum said to Whitney when Whitney came home that he was now in the small bedroom, which was Paul's old room. So yeah. there's a bit of... Ben will like that. Yeah, exactly. Getting he'll... well away. Return to the old horn. <laughs> Do you reckon that that will happen, that he'll take Ben home? Well, ben won't be able to do it. Yeah. He won't be able to perform. Exactly. Because he'll be like, oh, too many memories are flooding back. <laughs> Paul's ghost. Yeah. He'll have flashbacks like Bobby. Got off Paul. <laughs> you just see you just see a woman in a curly-haired wig. <laughs> Or Les. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Rainy did get out. She like, convinced Stuart she was better, but she just needed to um, freshen up. 
Mm. After being in a bucket for like a few weeks, but she said her breath smelt because she hasn't brushed her teeth. For <laughs> well, a while. anymore. Well, exactly. She's gonna have really <laughs> minty fresh breath now. She's drinking the alcohol out of that listerine. <laughs> I mean, not much in alcohol is there. It's, oh, barely. Just a worth mentioning. Measure. Oh, really desperate. But then that's it's been known for alcoholics mm. to be so desperate that they would, you know, drink the mouthwash. And um, he also like gave her sleeping pills as well, which seems oh, like yeah, counterproductive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting cold taken, but I've drugged her. Yeah. Like, oh. I really thought that they, um, that was just an excuse for like on Friday's episode that the actress who plays Rainy <laughs> wasn't in. So no. they just were like, oh yeah, she's got some sleeping pills. Do you want to go fry up? I was like, okay. But the way she it was quite casual about it though. I mean, that was a bit Yeah, you quite enjoyed dark. it. Yeah, the fact he had that control over Rainy. So again, is it that maybe Stuart's got that more control over Rainy than he's actually letting mm. on. I'm still holding out for the hope that he's got someone locked up in his flat this whole time. <gasps> Who could it be? Dylan Box. Yeah. We've talked about it before, but, I, you know, that would be like a twist. Mm. Like, everyone thinks he's a changed man and he's had these people locked up. That would give him a bit of an edge back. Aunt Babe, she had um, Aunt S- uh, Sylvie lo- locked up, didn't she? Oh, yeah, in her house off the square. Yeah, so I think, you know, a, a, someone locked away again would be good. It'd be a bit like Tony from Hollyoaks. <laughs> We've mentioned Hollyoaks twice. We always mention Hollyoaks in our thing. Maxine's secret is out. Yeah. And Munchausen. <laughs> Spoiler, everyone. Sorry. Right. So next up, we have, we're assuming a permanent exit here. At least 12 months. Oh, it's at least a year. Uh, and, and, but, but, but then. It's quite he... normal for Ted, though. <laughs> he doesn't even need a reason to be missing for 12 no. months, does he? Um, so yeah, him and Wanda were like, went on more dates and. He's very hot and cold, Ted, isn't he? Mm. Do you know who set him up for the dates? I've, I've waited all week to say this. Cherie. Well, yes, Cherie, but do you oh. know who else? Patrick. No. Patty Boom Boom. <laughs> Patty Boom Boom. Is that his nickname from Cherie? Yeah. Again? I've waited all week to say that. Oh, I, I like it. I don't like the names. Patty Boom Boom. Mm. I mean, Wanda's very mysterious. The Boing. The Boing. The Boom Boom. <laughs> I just thought they linked. I miss De Boing. Where would it ever happen to De Boing? I think I'm just going to pretend it was Cherie. Cherie De Boing? Yeah. Cherie De Boing and Patrick Boom Boom. <laughs> or would there be their uh, couple name then? Boing Boom. <laughs> boom Boing. That's enough of that. Stop saying it. Okay. This is Ted's time. It's the last time we're going to be talking about Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce died over a year and a half ago. We still talk about her. Oh. But this is going <laughs> to be the last time we talk about Ted, Ooh, I feel. Who says my name? <laughs> But yeah, he was, he had like a proper exit. Like he was saying goodbye to all his characters he had storylines with, aka Bernie. Yeah. And, and, and they've shoehorned people as well, just so there was. Yeah, Denise. Just, yeah, just because there was. So there'd be. So yeah, so Denise had one story with him on Friday, just so they, Denise had a reason <laughs> to say goodbye to him. And worry for his future. Yes. Karen, who has had a very difficult relationship with Ted the whole mm. time. They hated each other from the tower block. Yeah, so for years. They were, <laughs> and when when the, the tailors arrived... The, they hated each other, yeah. Well, Joyce opened the neck curtains and went, Oh, no! I know, not them! <laughs> They're here! <laughs> and now Ted's like, see you later. Bye, yeah, Karen. You've always them. been a friend. Didn't even bother telling the count to his left. No, but Karen's going to sort that out. Yeah, right. But then what's going to happen is... Mitch. Is, you reckon, oh no. Mitch and Bailey. Mitch is going to move in downstairs. Oh God, yeah. Probably take Ted's pension and all sorts. Well, he did, Karen did promise that she, she wouldn't let it turn into a drug den again, mm. which is kind. <laughs> it is. I mean, we all thought Wanda was this nice, sweet, like, adventurous woman. But she mm. appears to have, like, a, maybe a dark side, because Denise wasn't sure about her all week. Yes. And then she was, like, convinced by her that she was okay i think she was only best for ted yeah she was only not convinced by wanda just because wanda was the mother of sheree mm. and denise still does not trust sheree money grabbing. at all it's money grabbing i think she thinks that sheree's a bad influence on boom boom <laughs> and she and it's just everything just doesn't add up to denise very well so introducing the mother also doesn't quite add up but then all of a sudden it all took all it took for wanda to convince denise <laughs> was a little speech about everyone needs companionship everyone needs a friend and a partner and you know me and ted we're going to be companions we're not necessarily going to be in love lovers yeah but we're going <laughs> to we're going to help each other out and that's all it took for denise so all sheree needs to do is to take denise to one side and be like me and Boom Boom, we're fine. We're going to be, you know, we're just companions. And mm. then Denise should understand. And be it was happy because for them. Cherie said to Denise that she was a lonely woman. And I think that, like, hit Denise, like, hmm, maybe I am. Well, they got. <laughs> Even though she's got Jack. But Jack's yeah. not well, she, she looked last. over. She looked over to Jack, didn't she, when he was talking oh, about she... that? Yeah, and Jack was kind of like being laddie in the <laughs> corner. And Denise was like, well, oh, there's my police officer. Four weeks on, still not. <laughs> 
blooming wearing the uniform. And um, he has a police storyline coming up soon. Oh, does he? Mm. So is he actually a police officer is. now, or is it, are we still waiting? Not yet. But is it pending? Later, he um, makes an arrest is of a character. Like, I don't know how long it takes. Does he have to go through police training again? I don't think so, because this is like in a few months. I mean, Jack is a very fit guy. Don't get me wrong. Mm. As in, he's toned. He's got a good body, and you know, I'm you sure. Do the beep test. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I'm sure there must be some kind of basic training he should need to go through again. Or is that just for, like, if you start out as a police officer? I don't know. If anyone does know, send us in. Ask no? John Sen and Kate Oates, because they're writing it. Well, then they're not. They're well, guiding no, they're it. Design. <laughs> yes. The storyliners are B- BFFs of the storyliners. And uh, shout out to the writers. Anyway, we've done this again. Last week we went off Ted Topic, and now we've gone off Ted Topic It's because again. we have nothing to talk about with Ted, and we're desperately trying to well, fill Bernadette in the gap. bought him a present to say... Because, like, Denise kind of convinced him not to go. Patrick convinced him to go and then bernadette then convinced him to go again no and then he no, did go patrick convinced him to go yeah then denise denise convinced him not it. to go and then it's all happened in one episode <laughs> can we just emphasize this for a second <laughs> ted decided that he was gonna go at the beginning of the episode mm-hmm. by about one third into the episode denise had talked <laughs> him out of going then two thirds into the episode Bernadette gives a speech about how he's a chess piece. He's the queen. Mm. <laughs> and then he can move anywhere he wants to. King? No, the queen is the one oh, who can move anywhere. She said king. Oh, she probably God. didn't want to upset him. Um, yeah. No, kings can move anywhere, to be fair. But they can't move as many spaces as a queen. That's fine. Queen has the most spaces. He's got wonder. But, yeah. Who is his queen? Who will then move <laughs> further away from him? <laughs> uh, but, but, but because also um, Ted wasn't convinced that he could live on a diet off his standard diet of egg and chips. Mm. Monday to Friday. And he felt guilty. He didn't feel like he should move on from Joyce. Like He kind of felt guilty for moving on from her. So that was kind of sweet, I guess. I guess. But then he handed over the torch of caring for Joyce by watering the broad beans to Boom Boom, which That's is Patrick. Right. So now... now <laughs> Patrick going to that again. Yeah. So, yeah, so the allotments are now back to Patrick. <laughs> it's just all this handing over, all this randomness. Mm. Martin used to own it. So I don't know what happened there. Well, it's Arthur, wasn't it? I don't know how it? Ted got it. Well, Ted probably just... Turned up. <laughs> squatter's rights, isn't it? He probably just sat in there for one My day. My board beans. <laughs> But then Martin had, had, maybe they share it because Martin had sex with Stacy exactly in, in there, the shed, and that's when Ted covered the eyes of the urn, which was what <laughs> his dead wife was in. God, it's, thinking back of all of Ted's stories just makes me sad. Mm. This was the best one, and it ended on a big cliffhanger, which yes. I, I hope that we just don't hear ever again. So it's like just left in the air. About well, what whether Ted's dead or not. Yeah, whether Wanda's killed him. Because mm. um, she's mentioned that she's widowed twice. This is before she was even introduced, when Cherie said that this woman was on this app. And she mentioned that he, her, her most previous husband had very good life insurance. Mm, to Denise, and like a little joke. That's yeah, how ha, they ha, got ha, friends. Ha, yeah. And then Cherie just dropped the bombshell about some court case. Which she's just been cleared of perhaps murdering her dark <laughs> husband. And yeah, he was acquitted. Mm. It was found out that there was no evidence to prove it. There's no point murdering Ted because he's literally got nothing. Yeah, what well, he had, like, Mitch stole, so... Yeah, that's true. That's true. That money that he... Uh, She's not going to get much away. from him, is she? Well, but, but again, if he takes out a good life insurance policy. We also found out about Ted's ex employment. We all thought that Ted didn't work. Like, the whole of oh, his yeah, life, he, just he was, was a bit of a lazy in the bones. army, and that was it. Yeah, but no, 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 no. He was a TV repairman. Mm. He used to go to people's homes <laughs> and repair their TVs. God, that was a bundle of laughs. Oh, he never really talks about TVs much. Well, he wasn't... I mean, if you worked as a TV repairman, surely you'd have some kind of foot in the technology door. Mm. But he didn't like anything that was technical. No. His mobile phone scared him. <laughs> it's like when it vibrated, he used to just throw it across the room and just mis- misunderstand it. I mean, sadly, we didn't get Julia's theme again. Well, we He's didn't even so get long. a shot... We didn't even get a shot of him leaving in the taxi. <laughs> We just the That's taxi true. just drove off, and then they just moved on to the next. Yeah, they scene. focused on um, Denise, didn't they? Mm. But yeah, no Julius theme for poor Ted. No, but I, could I, you imagine? But it, I did half expect it to happen. <laughs> I I must. Well, after all this time, that's what they'd give a Julius theme mm. to, not Carmel. I, I mean, it would have been an absolute travesty. Not Sean Slater back after ten years. No, Ted. he's too short. You need, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Ted has been there what two years? Two thousand seventeen. Yeah, so he's been, he's he's done a, but then he's not really been there, has no. he? He's just kind of, I mean, the, the, the longest he's ever had a, a stretch in recent memory was this week when he was on every day, every <laughs> Two weeks day. Worth yeah. As well. And yet somehow the story was, it's like they stretched the story. <laughs> well, he's gone now, so mm. we can put Ted to rest I think, until we hear about his death. Absolutely. I think Mo Harris can best sum up Ted, and I'm going to quote her. So, in memory of Ted, 
Mo Harris had to say, Ted is as much fun as a fart in a paper bag. <laughs> or Ted's quote of, I'm quite boring, ain't I? <laughs> <laughs> These are all good quotes. <laughs> if anyone wants to um, get a picture of, a nice picture of Ted and have a, the quote and then put 2017 to 2019 <laughs> for us, mm. we will retweet that and post that. But yeah, I mean, surprise exit. I haven't had one of them in ages. No. Nope. Unannounced exit. So that's fun. So we'll get him on the show next week and have a little chat <laughs> <laughs> about chess. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. And about his um future. Lovely. So that was the week. Hope you all enjoyed EastEnders this week. Let it us is, know yes. by getting in touch with us on our Twitter, at EastEnders Week, our Instagram, at EastEnders Weekly Podcast, our Facebook group, search EastEnders Weekly Podcast, and then click to join the group. You can also search us for us on YouTube, or you can email us, EastEndersWeekly at gmail.com. We're now going to go to the section where we talk about who won the week, your comments, and a certain trailer dropped. And you know me, I ain't one to gossip. Yes, we're not one to gossip. However, we have good we have good reason to gossip, and that's because a trailer dropped this this evening. I did for, autumn for the autumn the fall? Yeah, if you're American, ready for what's coming up on the soap. But before we get into that, we're going to just go through some birthdays that may have been forgotten or missed on the show this week. We are, and I'm not going back in time this week because I watched a year and a half worth of EastEnders, and I don't want to watch any more. <laughs> Not that you hate EastEnders. You, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> Dottie Cotton finished me off. Ooh, um, like she might her <laughs> nan. That's right. Grandma! So just two birthdays that were missed this week. And that was 26th of September 1982 was Gus Smith's birthday. I loved Gus. Did you? I did. I, he's, he's the he was one. He's the who, new Robbie. Yeah, he was, he was the new. Wait, well, he was the old Robbie because mm. he replaced. Wait, well, he's been replaced by Robbie. Mm. He, he had a the, Wellard, didn't he? Did he? Did he look yeah, after he Wellard? He had like the Wellard too, didn't he? I'm sure he did. He must have looked after after Robbie then mm. because Robbie left. But, but he was the road sweeper of the square and also he was manipulated quite easily by everyone. By everyone, yeah. When I was watching Year and a Half of Effie's Dennis this week, Robbie came back, oh. much to my disappointment. Yeah. And Tiffany was the one that told him that Wellard had died. Oh, that's sad. Talking about um, Robbie, sorry, really oh, quickly. No. The actor who played Robbie, he was in the news this week because he was on a dating app. He nah, was... no, no, no. If you go onto Dean Gaffney's Twitter, oh? he's not very happy with the news by making stuff up. Oh, so it's fake news. Yeah, don't believe that rubbish. <laughs> what would Trump say? I believe say? Dean Gaffney. Do you? <laughs> right, the second birthday was 30th of September 1994 when Kyle Slater was born. Kyle Slater. I liked mm. Kyle. I don't know really why he got wrote, written out. Well, he was just written in for his one thing, and then that was it. Well, really, it was to save Stacy. Was it was to give, make Stacy go mm. a bit and to be like the first transgender character, and then they didn't know what to do, and then axed him. Yeah, but they could have done. A, they could have they done, could have stuff done with loads. Him, yeah, I know. they just didn't. But you know, he was first introduced because Stacy was having a bit of a breakdown, wasn't she? Mm. And, so and she... they wasted Denise Welsh as his mum. So, That's very true. Denise Welsh is an excellent actress, and God. they should. They should bring her in somehow as another character. Yeah. Who should, could she be? She could... Hmm, I feel like she would be a Carter. She'd be, like, related to Linda somehow. Mm. Linda's aunt or something. Yeah. Aunt Liz. <laughs> anyway, um, that's great. So that's... That was it, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's your work that's, done. That's only the people that were born, I'm afraid. Wipe your hands clean. That's all I could do. Fair enough. Um, so who won... Oh, before we do who won the week then, to find out which story uh, you voted for had mm-hmm. won the week, let's talk about the, the trailer. Um, yeah. So it's three minutes. It was dropped on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, there's a few telling things in there, a few stories that may or may not... Most, the biggest one for me was Jay's story. Yeah. There, there seems to be a story happening for jay mm, well he seems to hate someone who's died and mm. kind of sabotaging the um coffin or the funeral but there's engraving that he looks at mm. on the coffin yes no it's on the bench you know that war memorial bit of the set oh right it's on that bench okay and it, it says jace or jason yeah i think so because that was his dad jace is his dad who yeah. was killed by terry bates who was like the leader of the gang that jace was like involved in so people think that it's Terry Bates that's died. Okay. Because the coffin, because the leaked photos from ages ago, it said Gov on it, I think. So if he's like the leader of a gang, I guess they might have a nickname. Oh, Governor, yeah. Governor, yeah. maybe. Do you know, I didn't, <laughs> stupid of me, I didn't link it to those photographs they leaked. Yeah, that's what it was. Oh, I see. So that's the funeral. Mm. Well, we think, we don't know. Everyone but... presumed it was going to be Pat or Les. Yeah, Les, not Pam. Pam's coming back, but. 
Well, I said Pat, so yeah, sorry, Pam, <laughs> Pam or Les. Yeah, but yeah, we did think it might be Les, but maybe not, might be surprised yet. But yeah, Lola is getting kidnapped by one of the Pan- Panasa brothers. Oh yeah, the Panzer brothers are coming in, aren't they? They're in it next week, yeah, with there, Dottie. There's a few stories with them that was related as well. They were having, one of them was having an argument with... The Mitchells, Ben. One, but was it with Ben? I think his dodgy cars from this week... I think, you know, he was going to get a Jaguar or whatever for someone. I think mm. that's for a Panasar brother. Okay. That happens next week. And then obviously <laughs> something happens and then they kidnap Lola for some reason. So do you, think, anyone would care. do you think they're going to be kept outside of the square for a little while before they're then introduced? Because two of them are in it next week, mm. not three. We also have Sharon's 50th birthday celebrations yes. where she has photos of herself pinned up everywhere because why not yeah yeah and mel takes one down and looks at it viciously and there seems to be an agreement a gentleman's agreement but let's say a a lady's agreement Mm. between sharon and mel that this was this is the last one this is the last time so there must be something well we hear mel say on my life Mm. so is that telling is that foreshadowing that word we love more spoilers for set photos that were leaked um the there's like a car chase with sharon and mel isn't there from oh. the photos from the newspaper? Oh, so similar, Alla, Phil, and Steve. Steve, yes. Yeah. So is Mel gonna fake her death? Get a bit of money that way? What you're saying, Steve's faked his death? I'm not saying Steve has. I'm saying Mel might. Nah, but, but what if Steve has? No, <laughs> we saw him blow up. Mm, yeah, but we didn't see you after that, did we? <laughs> but we you know, it's foreshadowing, I guess, on my life. They ended the trailer with that. We had Stuart. Stuart pinned Kathy up against the wall, strangling her. Yes, well, I mean, do do not do that with Kathy. Do not. Not, not For any other reason, she possibly may break some bones Mm. because she's very fragile. (laughs) It's interesting, we didn't see Kat, Kush, Mm. Ruby. Did we see the Brennings? Oh, we saw him, Max, have a go at Rainey saying she was an addict. Oh, yeah, yeah, because she's the drug addict story. um, We saw saw the Carters. We did, about the autism story. Yeah, and also you see Linda's having a drink with the woman who... We completely yeah, the yummy mummies. Well, should we complete the yummy mummies? But we completely forgot that one of the yummy mummies upset Shirley. Oh, yeah, Shirley she punched, s- her. punched her in the face. We didn't even link no. that, did we, last week? That I feel they like a the fool. Same. They all look the same. They do. They do. But like, I didn't. We didn't link it at all, and no one kind of picked up on it mm. either. It's it's strange that, isn't it? Because you think that would be something that's so obvious mm. now, thinking back on it, but we didn't pick up on it at the time. So yes, obviously the autism story and uh, Linda's desperate trying to acceptance for Ollie is going to continue. Mm. Um, interesting story to take, and also. This may lead to the story that we, again, spoilers, if you don't want to know, do skip forward about 15 seconds um, (laughs) if you want. Uh, Linda's obviously having that alcoholism problem. So and that's going to bring back her son, Lee. Lee Carter, yeah, for his stint back as well. So this is obviously the lead what leads Mm -hmm. to it, her desperation to want to be fitted in and part of the clique, part of the group. Uh, We had it seems like Adam and Habiba have been outed and Billy is the one to save honey. Oh, I hated that. I hated (laughs) when they showed that, when they showed Miriam. Miriam, Yeah, yeah. saying like said to Billy, you're really honey's. You're the only one that could save her. Save her. It's like, what do you know, Miriam? Stop it. (laughs) Stop it! We also had Martin with like loads of cuts on him, and yeah. he was like teaming up with Ben. So yeah, well Very yeah, exciting. well look, Ben's threatening him, so obviously that links mm. to the wretch. Stacey. And Jean is angry at um Martin as well. She keeps saying to get out. Yeah, but I, th- I think that's Stacy linked again, isn't mm. it? Because Jean is proper upset about Stacy having run away. So yeah, really interesting, Taylor. And there's going to be a Halloween episode because Whitney's dressed. Up. Whitney's in a costume. Yes. Yeah, so yay again for a Halloween <laughs> episode. I mean, last week, last year's is going to be very difficult to pull off anything any better than Billy losing his teeth, Halloween <sighs> party, and the pregnancy. Haley giving birth. Yeah. yeah. So mm. we'll, 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 we'll hope for more. <laughs> well, and there was that effect, wasn't there, when the, the, the flyer fell on the floor at Halloween, wasn't there? Do you remember? No. A special effect. Oh, goodness me, I can't remember exactly. Something happened and there was that. Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to go too much into it. <laughs> I have to rewatch to find out. But yes, yeah, so lots to look forward to coming up up to Christmas. Um, I mean, the next trailer is going to be the Christmas New Year trailer. That'd and be then, fun. And then the one after that, I'm presuming, will be the 35th anniversary. Mm. So the next two trailers are going to be very exciting times. And perhaps ones we could discuss in more detail. Of course. On always. the show. So um, who won the week? We give you four stories for you to vote on our Twitter, Instagram and Facebook group. And you have to choose which one you preferred. The four choices were Mel's Gone Bonkers. Yeah, I love Mel and Sharon. The new Pauline and Peggy. 
Oh, I'll have a comment about that later. Tiff's Brave Confession. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I wasn't that fussed about them, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. You T- asked. I told you. <laughs> Fair enough. Ted's Wonderland. Oh, that's number one. Yeah. And Rainy's Cold Turkey. Oh, yeah. I would have picked um, my favourite one was Chantel Grey. I suppose that's under the Tiff umbrella, isn't it? I mean... We, I think we did Chantel and Grey last week and they won, so I don't oh, tend okay. to try to... I try to mix oh, things up yeah. a little bit. So who do you think came joint last? There were two that were bo- right bottom. Ted. Yeah. And Rainey. Yeah. Both got 12% of the vote. Oh, dear. Second place... Tiff. Was Tiff with 27% of the vote. And runaway winner was the, obviously the Mel and Sharon story mm-hmm. with 49% of the vote. Thank you for everyone who voted. As I said, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook group to vote for next week. A few comments, as always, from people who have got in touch. On Twitter, at BritishWan007 says, Rainy was good last night, though I don't usually like her. And Stuart sings. Why not? Get in touch and tell us. <laughs> Ben would like to know. At Obsessive Soul 3 on Twitter said, I like to think Ben and Keanu are the new Peggy and Pauline. They work well as frenemies. I can see loads of potential for their arc in the future. Ben and Keanu. God. They're more like the Peggy and Pat. They'll have a cup of tea. Yeah. But they're still for a chair. (laughs) (laughs) At Alan Actor 123 said about the Chantel and Grey story. Mm. Since the start of the story, I've never seen Grey as a typical abuser. And last night just confirmed that for me. I think he hates what he does to Chantel. But because he struggles to control his anger so much, he just can't help himself. No comment. No comment. You're, just, you're staying on the fence. I refuse with, to comment. You stay on the fence with the Chantel. Apart from his towel story. drop. <laughs> yeah. the only thing I'm going to comment on this week. Sean Snowden on our Facebook group said, Mel is a drama queen, always has been and always will be. Yeah, we love a good drama queen. We certainly do. Seth Rowe on our Facebook group, sorry if I pronounced that name wrong, says, Mel is a superhero. Ooh, contrast. Mm. And on our Instagram, Haley underscore Carrell underscore XX says, I don't like the new brothers from the trailer. And why is it always Ben to get beat up? I know they showed someone like getting beaten up in like against the brick wall, didn't they? In shadows. But I mean, Ben is literally involved in every single storyline at the moment. They're getting their money worth of Ben, aren't mm. they? Big I time. hope he doesn't get um, overused and end up becoming unpopular. The uh, Mick Carter effect, might mm. some, might, some might say. The Hayley Slater <laughs> Yeah, well, no, they were really desperate times at that they point. Were. Right, this will be the last time we're saying them. You can find us on Twitter, at EastEnders Week. You can find us on Instagram, at EastEnders Weekly Podcast, or our Facebook group, search EastEnders Weekly Podcast, and then click to join the group. You can find our YouTube channel by searching EastEnders Weekly. We do a weekly spoiler cast, which is very good. A guy called Ben does it, I believe. <laughs> I do. He's got to get up in the early hours. Yep, to get those spoilers and the photographs and edit it. I help edit together, though, don't I? No. (laughs) Um, Some people have compared your voice to the sultry tones of a man who knows what he's talking about. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you do find our YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, because that helps us a lot. Also, you can listen to our podcast on YouTube or on Apple Podcasts or your favourite podcast app. And don't forget to subscribe on those as well. Or Telegram. We do a special audio version on tape as well. (laughs) And Braille. Don't forget to subscribe on the podcast so you avoid disappointment for it to land in your ears every Sunday. And also review us and comment with your review to say to say hello and just what you like yeah what you like what you don't like and that's it for another week of EastEnders Weekly I hope you guys have enjoyed the show do get in touch with us we love hearing your comments yes and we will have more to say next week